قبل ما نعمل اندرستي هاي نشتي اللي على على دوك الاتس اجو الاطفالس هذا دريت دي في التلفزيون كنا عم نراجعوا ني 2000 حنيت كمو بالانجليز ريت نسبيغا اللي المين سبيكر هو اللومز من انجلترا لورا اوبيامنت البروسيدور كلها هيكونوا باللغه الانجليزيه وديك اللي يراجعوني الفهم بس نتكلموا بالمالتي اوبيامنت اش دينجا البرلمان مالتي واللغه الثانيه اللغه مالتيه ريغراسياكو روب بيننس بيننس جاتش جوزف سميت مكين اونوربل ممبرز اوف بارلمنت استيم جيست it is my honor and privilege to address you today on a subject that is close to the heart of our democratic principles the role and evolution <coughs> of the parliamentary ombudsman. As we reflect on the journey of this vital institution, both in Malta and internationally, we gain insights from our past, understand our present, and look optimistically towards the future. The concept of the ombudsman, originating in Sweden way back in 1809, was both a visionary and a revolutionary idea. It represented the embodiment of fairness and justice, ensuring the voices of the people that were ahead in the corridors of power. Over the years, this role has evolved, adapting to the unique needs of different societies. We have seen the Ombudsman transition from a mere supervisory figure to a pivotal element in upholding democratic values and human rights. Now, with regards to my country, Malta, it embraced this concept and established its own office uh, of the Ombudsman way back in 1995. This was, of course, a pivotal moment in our history, signifying also our commitment to transparency, accountability, and the rule of law. Historically, the Ombudsman faced challenges like limited powers and a lack of public awareness. Yet, they persisted, carving a path towards greater accountability and transparency in governance. From Sweden to South Africa, from Canada to New Zealand, by the way, this is the model that we followed, the Ombudsman evolved with time, gaining national recognition and acceptance and adapting to the unique challenges and specific contexts of each nation. Invariably, it stood as a guardian of citizens' rights and an advocate for administrative justice. The path of the Ombudsman has not been, of course, without challenges. In Malta, our Ombudsman has navigated complex issues ranging from administrative inertia to the protection of the individual rights and is rapidly changing laws and societal norms. The delicate balance between respecting the autonomy of public administration and ensuring justice for the aggrieved citizens has been a continuous journey of learning and adaptation. To this effect, I have to say that both the Constitution of Malta and the Ombudsman Act were on various occasions amended in Parliament to empower more the Ombudsman. The Constitution was, with regards to the Office of the Ombudsman, the last that was amended was quite recently, three and a half years ago, in 2020, and it included, and I quote, in the exercise of his function, the Ombudsman shall not be subject to direction or control of any other person or authority, provided further that if during or after an investigation, the Ombudsman is of the opinion that uh, there is evidence of any corrupt practice as defined in the Permanent Commission Against Corruption Act, the Ombudsman may refer his findings directly to the Attorney General." Unquote. Again, also under the Ombudsman Act, in the same year, he was appointed, not the same year, four, four years after, uh, that the, the Ombudsman Act came into being in 20, 2007, he was also empowered to appoint, appoint commissioners for the invest, administrative investigation. Just then, that four years ago, again, he was also legally empowered, and I quote in the Ombudsman Act, uh, if during or after an investigation, the Ombudsman is the of, the, of the opinion 
that there is evidence of any corrupt practice as defined in the Permanent Commission against corruption, this is a reproduction of what is stated in the Constitution, because we have a written Constitution, it is reflected also in the Bosman, Ombudsman Act. The main act was also amended to the effect that his annual report of performance of his function under this act states, and I, I quote, that the said report shall as soon as possible be discussed during a dedicated parliamentary sitting, unquote. So this is the occasion when in Parliament uh, would debate also the report of the Ombudsman. Globally, Ombudsmen have faced similar challenges. In many countries, issues like limited resources, political interference, and the increasingly complexity of governance have tested the resilience and independence of this institution. Yet, though these challenges, Ombudsmen emerge stronger, more versatile, and more essential. The resiliency did not come without a cost. As lessons were learned, some moments exposed vulnerabilities, weakness, at times discouragement. In our current landscape, the role of the Ombudsman remains as crucial as ever. They are not just mediators, but guardians of justice, often standing as the last line of defense against administrative injustice. Political pressures, expanding responsibility, and the ever-increasing complexity of public grievance add layers of difficulty. Yet, amidst intermittent difficulties, there are many success stories. Take, for instance, I will take your example, uh, Mr. Berens, of your commendable work in the United Kingdom, which has set benchmarks in impartiality and effectiveness. The ride was never easy. As uh, I'm sure you, you will, you will uh, make reference to that. But your achievements are beacons of inspiration, reminding us of the profound impact an ombudsman can have. Now looking to the future, we stand at the cusp of a digital area. Technology promises to reshape our work, offering new, teas, new tools for encouragement and efficiency. Alongside these opportunities, once again, there are several challenges, maintaining the privacy, ensuring accessibility, and adapting to a rapidly changing world. Ombudsmen, therefore, need to continue to adapt, innovate, and collaborate globally. No matter how much the world changes, fairness and justice remain constant. There's much to be optimistic about, and I remember vividly uh, saying, among other interventions in the committee that I chair, in the House Business Committee, in March 2020, for example, and I, I, refer, I quote, I remember that there was a debate about whether one could consider that when a recommendation of the Ombudsman is put on the table of the House, because I lay all the reports on the table of the House, there would be an agreement between the government and opposition to have an ad hoc session and discuss that report. It is a procedure that we can start, that's what I said. In this way, we improve transparency and even improve the procedure when a problem arises. The vast majority of the recommendations are implemented, and this is something that I can confirm due to the fact, unquote, et cetera, et cetera. So in Malta, our commitment to strengthening the Ombudsman Office continues we ought to embrace technological aids in increasing accessibility and efficiency, but also to continue to raise public awareness and education about the Ombudsman role. I believe that while public relations are essential, the key, the key to enhancing this office is by unequivocally safeguarding its autonomy and legitimacy. I am personally optimistic because I see a future where, at the international level, the Ombudsman institution is becoming increasingly interconnected. The sharing of best practices, collaborative learning, and development of the national and international standards are shaping a future where the Ombudsman role is not just national, but part of the global framework of justice and accountability. I could see this in the gathering of the Association of the Mediterranean Ombudsman 
held here in Malta a few weeks ago, uh, where the Ombudsman, Zamit McKeon, our Ombudsman, shows the team the right to good administration, mid aspiration or reality. I remember in my address, I had remarked that the Ombudsman had created a forum for conversation and dispassionate deliberation about a subject that frequently arouses intense emotions as well as touching the lives of every person resident in these islands. I strongly believe that we need to keep fostering uh, such opportunities to think, criticize, discuss, question, share experiences, and above all, as it is our scope today, reflect. In conclusion, the journey of the parliamentary ombudsman from his historical roots to the present role and this aspiration for the future is a testament of our unwavering commitment to democracy and justice. As we reflect on this journey, let us renew our dedication to these ideals, both in Malta as part of the international community, but together we can ensure that the voice of the ombudsman remains strong, effective, and resolute in the pursuit of fairness and justice for all. So I take the opportunity to thank the Parliamentary Ombudsman of Malta, Judge Emeritus Joseph Zamit Mackeyan, and you, Mr. Rob Berns, for his insights as Health Services Ombudsman of the United Kingdom. I'm sure this will be a fruitful morning together from which we will definitely all benefit. This lecture that you are going to give us should serve not only as a platform for sharing knowledge, but as an opportunity for the creation of a new understanding and the forging of collaborative paths forward. We can perhaps discern our diverse perspectives when brought together that can shed light on ways that a single viewpoint cannot. I'm sure this lecture that you are going to deliver will add a unique piece of our collective understanding. We are here to listen, we are here to learn, we are here to contribute the, to conversations that will shape the future of our fields. Thank you very much, and I now give the floor to Judge Emeritus Zamit Nakian, the Parliament Ombudsman of Malta, to deliver his address.